Hello there and welcome to Upper 6 Further Maths. Here we're looking at nth roots of complex numbers so we can answer questions from exercise 1f. So we are familiar with De Marvel's theorem hopefully by now that if z is equal to um, r cos theta plus i sine theta then z to the n when we raise the complex number to the power of n we raise the modulus to the power of n and multiply the angle by the value of n. This isn't just true for whole numbers, this is also true for fractions, and that will help us find roots of complex numbers. So we've got a three-part question here first, and we've got to, first of all, solve the equation z cubed equals 1. So what number, when you cube it, will equal 1? Well, we know that 1 will be the answer, but we've got two more answers to find, in fact. So... The way we're going to do this is first by writing 1 in modulus argument form, and that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? 1 times by cos 0 plus i sine 0. It has an argument of 0 and a modulus of 1, and we don't generally write the 1 at the start because 1 times anything we know is just that anything. Uh, let's now, um, to both sides of the equation, get rid of this cubed symbol, so we'll cube root both sides. That will give us z equals cos 0 plus i sine 0 to the power of 1 over 3. And then apply De Moivre's theorem by multiplying the third into the argument. And that will give us 0 times the third, or 0 divided by 3. And we obviously know that that's going to equal 0. But if we're cheeky a little bit with this argument, we could rewrite the argument as now 2 pi reason we can do that is because cos and sine are equivalent every 2 pi radians. The graph repeats itself every 2 pi radians. So we can add on 2 pi radians inside cos and sine without really changing the complex number. Let's do exactly the same process here. Let's get rid of the cubed symbol on the top there by cube rooting both sides, or effectively doing to the power of a third, and then applying De Moivre's theorem by multiplying the third into the bracket, and we get a new complex root. It's cos 2 pi by 3 plus i sine 2 pi by 3. Um, so this is a second root of this um, complex number of this equation here. And we could also go again, we could also go to 4 pi. Remember, it repeats every 2 pi, so we could just carry on doing this 2 pi thing. Uh, cube roots both sides again and then apply to Moivre's theorem again, and we'd get cos 4 pi by 3 plus i sine 4 pi by 3. But remember, we generally want our argument to be in between minus pi up to pi, and this is outside of the range of that argument. So, in fact, we'll have to do a little adjustment and bring it back round from the bottom by minus 2 pi by 3 radians. And these are the three solutions to this equation. And in fact, if you go to the fundamental theorem of algebra, whenever you've got a polynomial to a degree n, there are n complex solutions, potentially not distinct, but at least n um, roots to a polynomial degree n. What this means is that if you have a polynomial, an equation to the power of 7, for example, expect to see 7 roots appear in that equation, and they'd, they'd some of them be complex. So these are our three answers to this equation. So we've done part A now, let's move on to part B. These three are now written above here. Sketch them on an Argand diagram. Well, one will be here at modulus uh, one, argument zero. The next one will have a length of one modulus of two pi by three. And the other one will be two pi by three radians round from there. Um, or you could have come back round by taking away 2 pi by 3 radians. And what you'll notice here is that we form a perfect equilateral triangle by these three roots, because they're all a modulus distance of 1 away from the origin, and they all have an angle of 120 degrees, or 2 pi by 3 radians on the inside, that will make it a perfect equilateral triangle. And moving on to part C now, show that the three roots will add together to make zero. Well, if we rewrite them in exponential form and then sum the series, we'll have to rewrite the third one having, a, having an argument of 4 pi by 3. Then here A is 1, the starting value of the sequence is 1. The multiplying um, factor is e to the 2 pi by 3i. And then we have three terms in this sequence we want to add together. 
applying the geometric series formula, uh, we get zero. The reason we get zero is because if you look at this component here, we're going to get e to the 2 pi by 3 i to the power of 3. Multiply your powers together and we get e to the 2 pi. If we cancel this bit out and cancel this bit out with each other, uh, e to the 2 pi, that's just 1. So 1 minus 1 gives us 0. So there we are. We've answered this question then. So going back to the diagram now, it's quite interesting that when you find cube roots on the argand diagram, it forms a perfect triangle. So let's just see that again in action. You continually rotate round, adding 2 pi by 3 to your argument each time you go round, and that will give you a lovely triangle. And that will also help you calculate all of the roots to this equation. Same thing works for fourth roots as well. You just add 2 pi by 4 round. Uh, you may have to adjust when you get down to the bottom to make your, sure your argument is uh, negative and outside of the range, so inside the range from minus pi to pi. Uh, so that's cube roots, quartic roots, quintic roots are exactly the same. So you um, plot all five of your coordinates by just adding 2 pi by 5 round the circle you go. So remember it's 2 pi for a full circle and you're dividing it into five sections and these will be all five roots for your um, complex equation. Same with hexagons as well, 2 pi by 6 round and 2 pi by 7 round as well if you want a heptagon. So we'll get cubic roots, add 2 pi by 3, fourth roots add 2 pi by 4 and you've noticed that you just do 2 pi divided by the number of roots you want. You're dividing it by the number of roots you want because you want to divide your circle into that many sections. So what can we say then? We can say that to find, to calculate the nth root of a complex number, the first thing you'll do is you'll calculate the first root using de Moivre's theorem, and the second thing you'll do is you'll add 2 pi by n to the argument n minus 1 times, adjusting if the angle needs to be made negative, or if it goes outside of that range from minus pi to pi. Make sure your argument is in that range for final answers. So let's go through one question where we can now use this shortcut here. And you can always use this shortcut. That's absolutely fine. So z to the 4 equals this value here. Now, first thing you need to do is modulus argument form it. So modulus it first, argument it second. Then write your uh, equation in modulus argument form. Next thing we'll do now is we'll work out the first root by applying de Moivre's theorem. So we'll fourth root both sides, doing a power of a quarter on the right hand side. So now apply de Moivre's theorem, do the power of a quarter onto the four, and then times that quarter by the argument. So it's now four to the power of a quarter, which is root two, and pi by three times a quarter is pi by twelve. So that's our first root. So we've done part uh, one now. Now let's move on to part two, where we just continually add two pi. In this case, we want fourth roots. So it's two pi by four. We're going to be adding uh, onto the argument around the circle. We'll go. So add two pi by four to the argument. That's going to be effectively the same as six pi by twelve. So that's now seven pi by twelve. Add another two. Add another two pi by four to the argument and we'll get uh, 13 pi by 12. But now this is outside of the range from minus pi to pi. So this is where we have to do a little adjusting, thinking about it going back round the argand diagram. At the moment, 13 pi by 12 would be down here. So we need to consider what it would be to go round the argand diagram from the bottom. That would be minus 11 pi by 12. And then add another 2 pi by 4 onto this, and you'll get... Uh, minus pi by 12, minus 5 pi by 12 on your arguments there. So we've got four answers here. We worked out the first one, that was this one here, by applying de Moivre's theorem. That gave us our first one, and then we just continually added 2 pi by 4 rounds the circle we go 
to get all of our solutions. It was at this point here we needed to do an adjustment to work out the proper argument when we go round the bottom of the argon diagram to this coordinate here. But then once you've found this point, just carry on adding 2 pi by 4 uh, to get to your next solutions. So there we are, let's have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do with this complex number is we need to write it in modulus argument form. So it's going to be 5 squared plus 5 root 3 squared, and that's going to be 5 uh, times 2, that's 10. And the argument, theta, well, let's just draw it out in the argon diagram quickly. 5 minus 5 root 3, that would be down here. So that's going to be minus tan inverse 5 root 3 over 5. Cancel out 5s from top and bottom, and we get minus pi by 3. So z to the power of 5 equals 10 times cos minus pi by 3 plus i sine minus pi by 3. Let's now take a fifth root of both sides. So it's now going to be 10. Uh, let's just do it. Let's write out all of our working here. 10 times cos uh, minus pi by 3 plus i sine minus pi by 3. Uh, how many brackets do I need here? One more. Uh, let's do that to the power of one fifth now, and then we'll rewrite it out. So now we'll apply De Moivre's theorem. It will be 10 to the power of a fifth, and that's not an easy calculation to do, so I'll just leave it as 10 to the power of a fifth. But then we multiply the um, power into the argument. So it's now going to be cos minus pi by 15 plus i sine minus pi by 15. So there we are. So that's our first answer. Let's now add 2 pi by 5 onto the argument to get the next set of solutions. And we'll just continue doing that four more times to get the four other solutions to this, um, to this uh, equation. So we'll do that on the calculator then. We'll take 1 fifth and then add 2, so 1 fifteenth rather, minus 1 15th, add 2 pi by 5, or 2 over 5, because it's all in terms of pi, isn't it, anyway? So that's going to now be cos pi by 3 plus i sine pi by 3. That's the next one. We'll carry on up here. On to the next one, we'll add 2 pi by 5. So let's now do answer, add 2 over 5. That's going to be 11 over 15 pi. So z equals 10 to the power of 1 fifth. And then that's going to be cos 11 pi by 15 plus i sine 11 pi by 15. Let's now add another 2 pi by 5 onto the argument. And this is where we need a correction. The calculator's given me uh, seven, so 17 over 15, but I now need to correct that to minus 13 pi over 15 plus i sine minus 13 pi by 15. And then how many have we got here? We've got one, uh, one, two, three, four. We need another one. So let's now write minus 13 over 15, add 2 over 5, and we'll get minus 7 over 15 as the final root here. So it'll be cos minus 7 pi by 15, add i sine minus 7 pi by 15. And there we are, we have first answer, second answer, third answer, fourth answer. 
Now, if we were to go accidentally on one more answer than we needed, we'd actually end up back at our first solution because what's happening on the argand diagram here is you start at the first one, which is uh, minus pi by 15, then you go round 2 pi by 5 to the next one, which is pi by 3, then you go round to the next one, which is 11 pi by 15, then you go round to the next one, which is 13 pi by 15, minus 13 pi by 15, and you go round to the next one, which is down here, and then all five of these, doesn't really look like it because I've done it very sloppily, but form a perfect pentagon. If you go round an extra one that you need to, you'll just be ending up back where you started. So there we are, that's the answer to this question here. So have plenty of practice on exercise 1F from page 24. Make sure you have a go at those problem solving ones in the exam style questions at the end of the um, exercise. And hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks very much for watching.